So H2O is a new blender tool that lets you simulate realistic droplets within minutes. It's using simulation nodes and you'll have to download Blender 3.6 which is in beta now but I'm sure within the next month it will be a stable version. But right now it works perfectly fine for me, I'm seeing no problems in there. And the good news is we now have an option to bake simulation nodes. Now let me show you how to install the add-on. Let's go to edit preferences, file paths, click plus here, select the folder right there which you'll have to extract after downloading, then add asset library. After doing that you just have to save your preferences, select your model, go to asset browser, and right there go to h2o now you have to drag and drop the h2o node group on your apple model now let's go to the timeline now change all these settings and customize it first we have the performance mode which is used for report performance when you have a huge scene and the report is playing slow so you just have to turn that on and it will give you a very simple version of the animation just for a preview if i turn this on you can see this is how my droplets are moving i can change the seed right there you can see they're starting and we have a trail right there so you can preview how the trail looks like too so now we have uh, another option which is the global scale if i turn that up and down it scales everything up or down so you don't have to go to each of them one by one and scale them then we have a vertex group if i click on here create a vertex group right there assign it then go to the modifier again select the vertex group from here it will only add these instances on top of the selection that we just did you can invert the vertex group from here i'm gonna just remove the vertex group for now we have another button which is mesh is deforming kind of weird if your mesh is deforming like it has some kind of modifiers or any shape keys or stuff like that okay so i added this option for that purpose only when you click this you'll just have to click here choose your UV map which is very important otherwise it won't work I'm gonna turn that off for now because my mesh is static not deforming and we have animated droplets which is the droplets that are moving we have a density for them if I turn that up or down you have to do that on the frame one because these are simulated then we have the density which is the whole density of it Then we have the delete nearby which deletes the nearby points seed is just a random value scale is used for the size of right there we have the trail width so the trails are attributes that i output to the shader editor and i'm using it for the roughness control you can see there's a little bit of a trail happening here let's go to the shader editor let me show you how the this works so this is our trail which is not looking good because if you look at the geometry right here it is very low poly and these trails are saved on the points and we don't have any points here so first hide this modifier for a bit and select the object add a subdivision surface i'm gonna make it two turn off optimal display just apply that modifier or give it just like that i'm gonna go to the material view now now you can see that we have a perfect trail going on there we can turn up the trail width you can see which also deletes the droplets that are in the way of this one so i'm gonna turn this down a little bit because i don't need that much size here i'm gonna turn this uh, subdivision modifier off for now because it's making it a little bit slow let's go to the solid view then we have the start frame and end frame which you know what it does if your animation is uh, starting like from frame 50 or very late you can just bring the start frame to negative 50 or 60 and it will start right away just like that now we have the speed which is controlling the speed then we have velocity variation you may have seen the droplets when they are moving they have some velocity variation for example they slow down at some point and then they get fast again and you have the noise power which is used for the noise when the droplet is moving down it's not coming straight down it's like changing the path so this is the power for that option and we have that noise scale we have the gravity multiplier which is very important for the droplets to come in the negative z direction down there and we have all droplets which is just a probability to control the amount of those then we have the delete nearby so the tiny droplets right there if i turn them on they are intersecting with these droplets so for them to not intersect you'll have to use this option so if i turn this up they will not intersect then we have the delete nearby for the normal droplets so i'm going to turn it up a little bit So they're not intersecting anymore that's it 
Now we have the turn on and off buttons so you can just turn them off too. You can also click on here on these buttons with the density factors on it and uh, choose a over text group for the density of each layer of the droplets. And you must use the roughness controller group that I'm going to provide with the tool. So you have to add a group and that roughness controller and connect it to your roughness. If you have already a roughness map, then you have to add a math node and add both of these or you'll have to multiply them based on what you like. So yeah, this is how it works. They're moving and clearing up its way as well. You can see it's scaling them down and yeah, we have a trail happening. Which we can control the size off. Let me switch to cycles and show you how these droplets look like. Right there, you can see they look pretty good. Now we also have a, a shader for the droplets. Let me choose that one droplet. Let's get the shader here. Right here, you can change the roughness, the color, the IOR and the these two settings which the limit shadows and right depth so if your droplets are looking too dark just like that you can just turn the limit shadows up and right depth up just like that this is how the setup looks like let me show you the geometry node setup of that too go to geometry nodes this is how it looks like i promise you that you will get no issues but there's one thing that you have to remember let's see if i'm using 3.6 beta version of blender here and then there is a new version that comes out and your simulation doesn't work so when the version changes the simulation input and simulation output nodes automatically disconnect so you have to reconnect the inputs and the outputs right there which i'll include a simple text guide above right there so that you can never make a mistake on that one simulation is happening right here and the second one is happening right here we just have to connect this right there this one here and this one there I mean, i'm so excited to see what you guys create with it and you can get this tool from my direct link in the description i'm sure it will help you create awesome renders faster and also help support the channel i'll see you in the next tutorial